It's Mass Effect Day. It's Mass Effect Day. It's Mass Effect Day. Are you excited? Cause I am. for a treat it's basically about friends in space and uh, and trying to live because the world is slowly ending around them that's what it is Charlotte, welcome. I wish I put in more hours. There's just... When I was younger, there was a thing where I was just moving on to the next thing. Moving on to the next thing. Trying to absorb as much as I possibly could. Um, but Mass Effect always put held a, a very dear place in my heart. The one game that I did do... You know, probably something similar to what you did with Drew, uh, with with this, with Drew. I don't know where Drew came from. Where <laughs> the Mass Effect uh, is Final Fantasy VIII. But again, yeah, for a lot of my life, I just kind of was kept going to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing. It's it's it brings a little shame to my heart that I I didn't stick with certain games as long as I should have. Especially franchises like these, like not returning to them at all. But I also love moments like this, right? I, I, I played them when they came out and I love them dearly, right? And now they're back. And they can, they come back, they're modernized in some way without touching too much of the, the secret sauce, you know? And it's giving me a reason to go back um, and re-experience them. And it's just it's just so exciting to have that. It's so exciting to have the, the the reason to go back and and like I think when I have that distance, you know, not again, not not at all to like say that anyone who's played these games over and over again ha should not be excited for this. Also, they should be. But like to have the distance I had with the game, each game makes me even more excited because like I don't remember every detail that uh, I probably would have if I returned. But it's all going to come flooding back, you know, and that's what's so exciting. I am super scared that somehow I'm not going to have the ability or knowledge to pull off some of the things that I did in the original games. Like, there are some uh, decisions that happen and, and, and choices that you need to make to avoid characters dying, to avoid all kinds of stuff. And I'm so scared to not make those same decisions again in the right way. Uh, to not have bad things happen. Lil Woke, welcome back. It's been a while. But yeah, I love Mass Effect, so I'm so excited to come back to the series. It, it, if I... For now, we're going to say we're playing through the first game on stream at, at minimum. Normally, today would have been Returnal, but we were getting a little burnt out on Returnal. It was hurting our soul. So if we go back to... You know, Mass Effect's out now. We were excited for this in the first place. And it's comforting. It's comforting, you know? While Returnal 
is uh is super great and super fun but also super soul crushing mjp everybody's here today hello um so yeah we're, go we're going with mass effect today with the release of the legendary edition remastered uh for the modern age running at 120 fps 1440p on my system i don't have a 4k screen so i'm not gonna bother running it at 4k i'm just i'm, I'm pretty hyped they in mass effect one is the game that they did the most with because it's the oldest game of course so i'm pretty excited to hop into mass effect one today if you've never experienced it thank you for joining our shepherd's journey we have a lot. Of, we got a. We got a few questions to ask ourselves when we start out, though, chat. So we'll let this song finish out, and then we'll hop into the game. Cause I need help. I already kind of talked through it a little bit with Fern. It's hard to decide. It's hard to decide some of these things. Okay. Here it is. All of our favorite people. Mass Effect 1. We've already got all our options set and such. I'm playing with controller. It's, oh, it's so good. So when I was setting all this up, you know, I was booting up the game and oh, it's so good. Bioware has a new logo startup for this, specifically for this, where it runs through a bunch of the characters from the franchise. And it's just, ah. Oh. This original song is so, so damn good. I'm doing good, MJP. I hope you are doing fantastically today. Thank you for coming and hanging out today with Mass Effect on deck. So here's my problem, chat. We're going to start a new career. Welcome to Alliance Military Database. Classified information requested. Establishing secure connection. Secure connection confirmed. Here we go. Here's um, immediately the first thing I've got. So I, as I remember it, you could not play Femshep in Mass Effect 1. So that's already new. But on top of that, or could you? I don't even remember. I remember... Mass Effect was a franchise that came so late to as well because it did not come to PlayStation until like right before Mass Effect 2 came out, I think. So when I first played Mass Effect, I played as a male Shepard. I played as Shepard and I named him Jack Shepard to, to tie him into Lost. So that is the Shepard that I have memories with. So do I go with my memories and continue on with Jack Shepard? Or do I play as Femme Shep? No Man's Sky? Yeah, I love No Man's Sky. I, I got it at launch on PS4. Uh, it's great in VR. It's it's such a and they've they've added so much to that game over the, over the years. So it's been a it's it's a great it's a great little game. It's a big game actually was what I mean to say. I, yeah, I totally, I totally, uh, my other thing, here's my other thing, Charlotte. I love, I love the people you can romance as, as Jack Shepard, John Shepard. Um, you know, Ta Tali and, and <laughs> I was telling Fern before the game in Mass Effect 3, they added the actress who played Sarah on Chuck. I think her name was Sarah. And I loved Chuck and I loved Yvonne Swarovski, so I, I romanced her in Mass Effect 3. But yeah, the romance options are different. And I, I would do want to romance Garrus, though, is an option that I want to romance. And so, like, there's that with Lady Shep and Jennifer Hale. 
It's just, I, I mean, I, I, my brain is saying go with Fem Shep this time out because it's something new and it's, it's an opportunity to, to shake it up. Well, my nostalgia, I mean, I can always go back and play a second time, right? I can go back through the entire one, two, three again. I'm going to do this. Please log in to access your profile. <laughs> okay, we're breaking routine. We, we want a first name though, chat. What do we... What's a good first name? I don't like Jane. It's too easy. If I go with the lost... If I go with the lost, she could be Kate. Kate Shepard. Which is kind of, it's kind of cute. If I'm, I'm breaking routine, but I'm keeping with like the... Fern was saying, I mean, it, it's still, and as we, the, the main reason I wouldn't want to do this is because there is a, a character in Mass Effect 2 Oh, that's, that, is a, that is a romance option on the table, too, I think. Uh, who's Jack, and she's freaking amazing. Any name ideas, chat? I'm just curious if there's any out there that you guys have. Kate works. Freckles. Oh my gosh, can I give can I give this character freckles? Look at that. Revert back to monkey. Warning. Data corruption detected. Please reconstruct profile. Confirm pre-service history. All right, Spacer. Both of your parents were in the Alliance military. Your childhood was spent on ships and stations as they transferred from posting to posting, never staying in one location for more than a few years. Following in your parents' footsteps, you enlisted at the age of 18. So this is like your background, your predetermined background that goes into all your character interactions, you know? So I can be a Spacer. We were on ships and stations my whole life, pretty much. Colonist, you were born and raised on Mindor, a small border colony in the Attican Traverse. When you were 16, slavers raided Mindor, slaughtering your family and friends. You were saved by a passing alliance patrol, and you enlisted with the military a few years later. That's just a uh, dark, dark origin story right there. Earthborn, you were an orphan raised on the streets of the great megatropo megatropolises covering Earth. You escaped the life of petty crime and underworld gangs by un enlisting with the Alliance military when you turned 18. So I'm pretty sure when I first played, I went with... I think I went with Colonist. It was either Colonist or Earth Earthborn. Spacer, I don't love. Spacer... <laughs> Spacer feels like a life of privilege, you know what I mean? It feels like a life of... <laughs> Colonist is is kind of fun because you're kind of you know you're not quite you're not quite spacer you're not quite it's it's these are the three different it, it's like uh you know still attached to Earth still attached to the ground <laughs> embracing all of all of space 
I do like to be, I like a, a sassy character though. And so like someone who came from a life of crime is kind of fun. And that kind of ties in with Kate, uh, the name Kate. So I kind of, I think Earthborn works for me. Confirm psychological profile. This is now like, so that's like your background. And then this is like your, your origins as a soldier. Like, what's your story as a soldier? How did you get to the, the rank that you are now uh, in the military? So there's soul survivor. During your service, a mission you were on went horribly wrong. Trapped in an extreme, in an extreme survival situation, you had to come, overcome physical torments and psychological stresses that would have broken most people. You survived while all those around you fell, and now you alone are left to tell the tale. War hero. Early in your military career, you found yourself facing an overwhelming enemy force. You risk your own life to save your fellow soldiers and defeat the enemy despite the impossible odds. Your bravery and heroism have earned you medals and recognition from the Alliance fleet. Or ruthless. Throughout your military career, you have held fast to one basic rule. Get the job done. You've been called cold, calculating, and brutal. Your reputation for ruthless efficiency makes your fellow soldiers wary of you. But when failure is not an option, the military always goes to you first. I think I might have done Soul Survivor, and again, if we want to kind of paint this picture broadly with, uh, you know, at least in the beginnings here with the, the paintbrush of Kate from Lost, Soul Survivor kind of, kind of fits. I think I did War Hero once, but then again, I, I, I don't love the story of a, of a hero decorated hero, you know what I mean? Like, I like a, someone that's a little... A little broken, a little messed up. But this is not the kind of messed up that I would go with. I'm not... Again, I, I, I think I'm going to probably stick to a lot of the same decisions that I did as much as I'm changing up at least the the Fem Shep. I'm not going to be a Renegade in this run. There's Paragon and Renegade. Basically, are you a light side, dark side kind of thing. And I'm, I'm always going to want to be a good boy. <laughs> I'm always going to want to be a... Uh, 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 a friendly face and I'm not a mean person so I think we go with soul survivor have this person be uh, uh, earthborn gangster dang what a life an earthborn uh, criminal <laughs> who you know was on the streets doing whatever they could to survive join the military found themselves in a situation where they had to survive an extreme situation. Everyone else died around me, and I and I am the lone survivor. What a what a tale! It's again, it kind of tracks with Lost and Kate, so we'll go with it. Confirm military specialization. See, this is where this is where things get interesting because I I played so straightforward. I think when I play the series before I played very like I'm just a grunt soldier I like to shoot stuff you know and and so soldier is kind of like the basic soldiers combat specialist ideal for the front lines of a firefight soldiers of improved health can specialize in all in use of all weapon types start with the ability to wear medium armor and can train in the use of heavy armor so it's just like it's very basic but there's some other stuff in here that gets more interesting. Engineers are tech specialists using the holographic Omni tool. They can decrypt security systems, repair or modify techn technical equipment, disrupt enemy weapons or shields, and heal their squad. And engineers can only wear light armor, and they specialize in pistols. I like I like specializing in pistols. I like tech stuff, but well, I want to go through this first. Here's the, the the class that I never really went in on. Adepts are biotic specialists. Through upgradable implants, they can now use biotic powers to lift or throw objects, shield the squad, or dis and disable or destroy enemies. Adepts can only wire wear light armor, and they specialize in pistols. This is kind of where my brain is is leaning. But we'll go through. Infiltrators combine combat and tech abilities to specialize in killing or disable enemies at long range. Infiltrators are trained to use Omni tools, focusing on description and offensive abilities rather than healing. They can specialize in pistols or sniper rifles and wear medium armor. The yeah, adept is kind of like Jesse from Control, huh? Uh, so this is kind of blending soldier and engineer right there. 
And this is Blinding Engineer and Adept. Sentinels combine biotic and tech abilities. Typically, they use biotic abilities and advanced healing sk skills to defend allies, though they can also disrupt opponents with biotic or tech attacks. They are more efficient at tech and biotics than other classes, but at the expense of combat. Sentinels can only wear light armor and receive no specialized weapon training. And then Vanguard. Vanguards are biotic warriors. They combine biotics and weapons to take down opponents and are especially deadly at short range. They specialize in pistols and shotguns and wear medium armor. Maybe this? Because it blends what I'm used to with the new biotic kind of... I'm, I'm leaning towards Infiltrator or Vanguard because it's, it's, it's blending what I'm used to, which is more the simple on the boot ground on the boots on the ground <laughs> uh, soldier gameplay with a, a specialization and biotics I know can be pretty powerful so that's kind of where I'm leaning anyone have any uh, experiences with uh, the different types of uh, classes and 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 power and weapon layouts that have any input here. I'm leaning Vanguard, though. I do like to get up close and personal, too. Especially in an RPG like this, where I can just, like, mash heal and stuff, and then just get in someone's face and blast them. Hold on. Just scrolling through some notifications. I think I'm going to go Vanguard. Let me just... That's what I was going to do. Best classes in Mass Effect. If it turns out like Vanguard is trash... Okay. Okay. Let's go Vanguard. Basically, they're saying choose any of these mixed mixed classes over any of these because it's more interesting and engaging. Confirm facial identification. Okay, she does have freckles, but not a ton. Oh god. I'm too scared to mess with the character creator because I remember it not being super great. Well, this kind of... <laughs> this looks like a space cape. Okay, facial structure. So these are presets, basically. Kind of like this face. No freckles. We gotta keep freckles. There's three th three different complexions. <laughs> Smooth and soft and nice. Oh, a little a little wrinkles here and there. And freckles and or maybe those aren't freckles. Maybe that's like I don't know. Is it like pimples? Is that what I'm am I mistaking pimples for freckles? <laughs> I do like this one the most, though. Neck thickness. Thick neck. We're a soldier. Puffy cheeks. Cheek gaunt. No, we're not gaunt. Ear size. I always go with pretty big ears. You can't even really see them with this hair. But I was told I had pretty big ears as a kid. 
So I always embrace that in my character creators. Can't really see. We're gonna have to go back to the ears. Oh, there you go. We're making a we're making a a Gilmore Girls <laughs> Lost Space Commander. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love a character creator, by the way. We love sitting in and playing with a character creator for a bit. I like this. I like this somber eye. Or the eye a little bit. A little wide. I remember this game, I don't know if this is just a, a false memory, but I remember this game have, being notorious for the character creator being one way and then you hop in the game and you go, oh god, what have I done? What what kind of beast have I made? Okay, eyeball color. I like a dark eye. Ooh, purple eye is kind of fun. I don't know, chat. Maybe like a light green. Uh, maybe this blue is kind of nice. Or like a wider chin here. And this is, this is a pretty old character creator, but it's pretty good. No, no, keep it, keep it like back here. There you go. Okay. That's a nice nose. That's a nice nose. A little, little shorter of a nose. But it comes out a bit. Comes out a bit. Okay. Here we go. Let's get wacky and wild. Hair tucked behind the ears. Is this style. I do want to honor the original, like, the base design of Femshep. And go with red hair. Femshep is red-haired in the base design. Pulled back. She kind of is giving me, I don't know if it's again, cause I named her Kate and that's, that alone is doing it. But like, there's, there's, she looks like Kate sometimes. <laughs> Such big hair. Ooh, that's kind of fun. It's kind of a fun look. Kind of like this one, chat. What do you think? I like the big brow. The brow they gave is, is pretty good at the start here. Oh, that's kind of nice, though, too. 
I like that one. I'm curious if any of that's been changed, if they added to the character creator at all. What do you think, Fern? What do you think of the look so far? The red hair, the blue eyes. Makeup. This is like... It's so light. Maybe it's just the lighting too here. I'm just gonna go with no blush, but we're getting, definitely getting some lip color going. I like a darker lip. Ooh, maybe just a, a black lipstick chat. Ooh, ho, 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 ho. I'm gonna look so mean, but I'm actually a very nice Commander Shepard. Not mean, but like mysterious and dark, but I'm actually just a nice sweetheart. What do we think, chat? Ooh, the thick. I like the red. To go with all the red we got going on. Ooh, that's good. Maybe not as not maybe not as drastic. We gotta honor Squall. This might be already the one, but let's just go through it. Yeah, we're going to honor Squall. Final Fantasy VIII. It's a mixture of all my loves right here. This might be the final look, chat. What do you think? This this might be our Shep. This is our Shepherd. Yo, is that emote my Shepherd? Finalized. Construction complete. Kate Shepard, born on Earth, did crimes on Earth, was the sole survivor of something really dark and scary and, and painful. She's a vanguard. She's ready to go. Identification confirmed. Almost an hour. So just to finish that, I put it up to veteran. I don't remember how hard this game is, so we're just going to stick with that. Uh, level scaling, there's it's 1 to 30 now instead of uh, 1 to 60, so that's interesting. Um, they uh, they changed the level scaling, so I'm going to try that. It's new. I do like my Squatchy's defensive powers. Shield me, heal me, do whatever you want. Otherwise, I'll do the main killing. You just take care of me. Subtitles, yes. Auto save, yes. Enable tutorials, yes, because we don't remember how to play. Confirm. There's a Mass Effect relay. Here we go, chat. Here we go. Well, what about Shepard? Earthborn, but no record of her family. Doesn't have one. She was raised on the streets. Learned to look out for herself. She saw her whole unit die on a cruise. She could have some serious emotional scars. Every soldier has scars. Shepard's a survivor. Is that the kind of person we want protecting the galaxy? Yes. That's the only kind of person who can protect the galaxy. I'll make the call. I got picked. In the year 2148, explorers on Mars discover the remains of an ancient spacefaring civilization. In the decades that followed, these mysterious artifacts revealed startling new technologies, enabling travel to the fur furthest stars. The basis for this incredible technology was a force that controlled the very fabric of space and time. It's called Mass Effect. 
Why do they make that so hard to read so quick? Gee whiz. The Arcturus Prime relay is in range. Initiating transmission sequence. Commander. Commander. We are connected. Calculating transit mass and destination. The relay is hot. Acquiring approach vector. If you didn't know, Joker, the pilot of the ship, is voiced by Seth Green. Look at my shepherd. So they use these Mass Effect relays, relay. you whip up next to them, and then Three, two, use the force generated one. within them to slingshot you elsewhere in the galaxy. Thrusters, Which is pretty cool. Check. Navigation. Check. Internal emission sync engaged. All systems online. Drift. Just under 1500k. 1500 is good. Your captain will be pleased. I am. I hate that guy. Nihilus gave you a compliment. So you hate him. You remember to zip up your jumpsuit on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just jumped us halfway across the galaxy and hit a target the size of a pinhead. So that's incredible. Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having them on board. Call me paranoid. You're paranoid. The Council helped fund this project. They have a right to send someone to keep an eye on their investment. Yeah, that is the official story. But only an idiot believes the official story. Oh, here it is, the classic. Oh, it brings back so many memories. The spinning wheel of conversation. It's just so perfect. Yes, I, you know, I know how to play. I'm just admiring, okay? You know, I agree, Joker. I don't send specters on shakedown runs. So there's more going on here than the captain's letting up. Joker, status report. Just cleared the mass relay, Captain. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. Good. Find a comm buoy and link us into the network. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Eden Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. Tell Commander Shepard to you meet fool. me in the room for a debriefing. You get that, Commander? You made him mad. Great. You pissed the captain off, and now I'm gonna pay for it. <laughs> Don't blame me. The captain's always in a bad mood. The the co only one who's talking to you, Joker. The commanding officer always has a fun little, fun little uh, rapport with the pilot. You know, here we are. We're in control. Mission computer. Codex has a bunch of our profile here. Here we go. We can kind of... We'll read through this. This is a more detailed version of what we selected in the beginning. You were bor born on Earth, but you never knew your parents. A child on the of the streets, you learned to live by your what wit wits and guts. I was going to say what's. Surviving in the hidden underbelly of the megatropolises of humanity's homeworld. Eager to find a better life... You joined the Alliance military when you came of age. You volunteered for an expedition to Akuz, a lush world on the outskirts of Alliance space that had suddenly dropped out of contact. Arriving on the surface, your patrol found the settlement intact, but no survivors. At nightfall, the Thresher Maws struck, mindless abominations of teeth and tentacles that rose up from beneath the earth. Constant gunfire couldn't drown out the shrieks of your fellow soldiers as they were dragged down to a gruesome death. Fifty marines died on a coos. You were the only one to make it back to the landing zone alive. A monument on the planet commemorates the massacre, a grim reminder of the price humanity must pay as they spread throughout the stars. Yikes. I don't remember that being so dark. So this is basically like a, a quick summary of Mass Effect and everything. Uh, how... how uh, how they got to, you know, whip throughout the stars and meet other alien beings. 
Um, we were born in 2154. It is currently 2183. We are 29. Oh, and actually, it does have Thresher Mods, blah, blah, blah. That is six years ago now. Six years ago that our, our crew was killed on that planet. Roughly 1,200 years oh, ago, reading the it. Turians were invited to join the Citadel Council to fulfill the role of galactic peacekeepers. The Turians have the largest fleet in Citadel space. It's too long. They make up the single largest <laughs> portion of the Council's military forces. As their territory and influence has spread, the Turians have come to rely on the Salarians for military intelligence and the Asari for diplomacy. Despite a somewhat colonial attitude towards the rest of the galaxy, the ruling hierarchy understands they would lose more than they would gain if the other two races were ever removed. Turians come from an autocratic society that values discipline and possesses a strong sense of personal and collective honor. There is lingering animosity between Turians and humans over the First Contact War of 2157, which is known as the Relay 314 incident to the Turians. Officially, however, the two species are allies, and they enjoy civil, if cool, diplomatic relations. So the Turians are, are the most prominent species, I think, in this game that you run into. They're pretty cool. The if a little Alliance colonial. As, as noted, here's our journal, here's our mission log, our squad screen. Squad screen lets you view your team's talents, use the arrows to select a talent or a rank, press A to spend points. We have points right now. We have a point in throw and warp. Let's, oh, let's add a point to charm. We're charming individual. And pistols. And Vanguard. Good first three point usage. All right. So, yeah, this is Joker the pilot, voiced by Seth Green. Goofy little boy. The captain's waiting for you in the comm room, Commander. You probably don't want to keep the captain waiting, Commander. It's Kaiden. Let me know how the sound is. They do some directional audio in here, and so sometimes it can feel a little quiet. It looks so good, chat. Relax, Presley. You're gonna give yourself an ulcer. Games still come out these days that look like this. Hello, Presley. Congratulations, Commander. Looks like we had a smooth run. You heading down to see the captain? I heard you arguing. Ar tell me more. Sounds like you don't trust our Turian guest. Sorry, Commander. Just having a chat with Adams down at Engineering. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. But you have to admit, something's odd about this mission. The whole crew feels it. Elaborate. You think the Alliance Brass is holding out on us? If all we're supposed to do is test out the stealth system, why is Captain Anderson in charge? And then there's Nihilus. Spectres are elite operatives, top covert agents. Why send a Spectre, a Turian Spectre, on a shakedown run? It doesn't add up. What do you know about the stealth systems? I just know it masks our location from scans and sensors. Cutting edge technology. The Normandy's the only ship with this prototype drive. But why are we fully staffed? A skeleton crew would be cheaper. Less chance of security leaks, too. Okay, it doesn't add up, okay? It's pretty obvious this shakedown run is just a cover. No point in no point in arguing about it, you know? See, so basically. You can you can you can leave it at that, right? I could have just said I'll look into it, and moved on, but you can investigate and learn more about about how a person's feeling about something, and that adds new new pieces of dialogue that we could we could toss in here. And that's what made Mass Effect so cool is that you really could just move on and and keep going, or you could just keep keep talking and keep figuring out more. And it still feels like they no one's replicated this just just quite. In the same way that Mass Effect did it. Do you have a problem with the captain? No, man. But I can't figure out what he's doing here. Captain Anderson is one of the most decorated special forces officers in the service. If he melted down all his medals, he could make a life-size statue of himself. You don't send a soldier like that on a do-nothing mission. 
He's treating this shakedown run too seriously. Something big is going on. You don't trust Nihilus. I don't like Turians in general. It runs in my family. My grandfather fought in the first contact war. Lost a lot of friends when the Turians hit us. That was long ago, brother. Time to stop being a space racist. That was 30 years ago. You can't blame Nihilus for that. No, I guess not. But it still makes me nervous to have a Spectre on board. Especially a Turian. We're an Alliance vessel, human military, but Nihilus doesn't answer to the captain like the rest of us. Spectres operate outside the normal chain of command. And they don't come along just to observe shakedown runs. <laughs> Nihilus looks like he's expecting some heavy action. I don't like it. I'll look into it, okay? You gotta keep your crew feeling okay. I'll see if I can get some answers when I see him. Good luck, Commander. My character doesn't look terrible in action, so that's good. Hello. Dr. Chakwas. I love Dr. Chakwas. Spectres don't answer to anyone. They can do whatever they want. Kill anyone who gets in their way. You watch too many spy vids, Jenkins. What do you think, Commander? We won't be staying on Eden Prime too long, will we? I'm itching for some real action. I sincerely hope you're kidding, Corporal. Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew members in the infirmary. Doctor's right. Only a fool goes looking for a fight, Corporal. Sorry, Commander, but this waiting's killing me. I've never been on a mission like this before, not one with a Spectre on board. What can you tell me about Nihilus? Turians are generally well respected by the other species. Their fleet has more patrols protecting Citadel space than any other. They don't always get on well with us, though. Some people find them too rigid. Others still blame them for the first contact war. As for Nihilus, I haven't said more than two words to him. He usually only speaks to the captain. I heard Nihilus once took down an entire enemy platoon all by himself. Man, I can't believe I'm on a mission with an actual Spectre. What do you know about the Spectre? Tell me more. Only what I've heard. Spectre agents work directly for the Citadel Council. They usually work alone or in small groups. Spectres don't have any official power, though. Basically, they're a shadow organization with a mandate to preserve and protect galactic stability. Protect it at any cost. Don't forget that part. Spectres operate above the law. You're from Eden Prime, aren't you, Jenkins? What's it like? Yo, it's we're going to this commander. dude's hometown. They've been real careful with development, so you don't have any city noise or pollution. My parents lived on the outskirts of the colony. At night, I used to climb this big hill and stare across the fields back at the lights from the main settlement. It was gorgeous. But when I got older, I realized it was a little too calm and quiet for me. That's why I joined the Alliance. Even Paradise gets boring after a while. Any idea why Eden Prime was chosen as our destination? Not What's going really on on Eden sure, Prime? Commander. Eden Prime is one of What's our most stable on? colonies. Good place to take the Normandy for a shakedown run, I guess. No real danger there. There's got to be something else going on. We've got a Spectre on board. That's why I'm so wound up. I can't wait for the real mission to start. It's just another mission. Don't freak out. Do your job, follow my orders, and there won't be any problems. Easy for you to say. You proved yourself on a coos. Everybody knows what you can do. This is my big chance. I need to show the brass what I can do. Don't play the hero. This mission isn't about personal glory, Corporal. We have a job to do. Don't do anything stupid to mess it up. Don't worry, ma'am. I'm not gonna screw this up. He's a little too antsy. The captain's waiting for me. Goodbye, Commander. It worries me. There's something about chat just walking through this ship. And as the series goes on, and in this one, just like how it evolves, how people come into the ship and join your ship. You go into all these side rooms and you learn more about everybody. You check in with everyone in between missions. It just, ugh. You love a hub. You love a hub. Hello, Nihilus. Commander Shepard, I was hoping you'd get here first. It will give us a chance to talk. About? What about? I'm interested in this world we're going to. Eden Prime. I've heard it's quite beautiful. Beyond beautiful, brother. They say brother. it's a paradise. Yes, a paradise. Serene, tranquil, safe. Eden Prime has become something of a symbol for your people, hasn't it? 
proof that humanity can not only establish colonies across the galaxy, but also protect them. But how safe is it really? That's a me uh, menacing question. Do you know something? Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? I think it's about time we told the Commander what's really going on. This mission is far more than a simple shakedown run. You don't say. I already figured that out. We're making a covert pickup on Eden Prime. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. Why the secrecy, bro? There must be a reason you didn't tell me about this, sir. This comes down from the top, Commander. Information strictly on a need-to-know basis. A research team on Eden Prime unearthed some kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. I thought the Protheans vanished 50,000 years ago. Ancient alien Their race. Legacy still remains. The mass relays, the citadel, our ship drives. It's all based on Prothean technology. This is Big Shepard. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. But Eden Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something on the same scale. We need to bring the beacon back to the citadel for proper study. Obviously, this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. This discovery could affect every species in Council space. You sound worried. Are we expecting trouble? I'm always expecting. Don't want. Don't want to put any praise or ship. criticism on him yet. For the beacon. He's also here to evaluate you. We're we're here to ask questions. We're not here to shake the boat. What's going on, Captain? The Alliance has been pushing for this for a long time. Humanity wants a larger role in shaping interstellar policy. We want more say with the Citadel Council. The Spectres represent the Council's power and authority. If they accept a human into their ranks, it shows how far the Alliance has come. Not many could have survived what you went through on Akuz. You showed a remarkable will to live, a particularly useful talent. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. You put my name forward, Nihilus? Why would a Turian want a human in the Spectres? Not all Turians Curious. resent humanity. Some of us see the potential of your species. We see what you have to offer to the rest of the galaxy, and to the Spectres. We are an elite group. It's rare to find an individual with the skills we seek. I don't care that you're human, Shepard. I only care that you can do the job. I love Turian voices. The layered voice. It's great. Gotta just make sure my captain's chill with this move before I get any kind of excited about it. I assume this is good for the Alliance. Earth needs this, Shepard. We're counting on you. I need to see your skills for myself, Commander. Eden Prime will be the first of several missions together. You'll be in charge of the ground team. Secure the beacon and get it onto the ship ASAP. Nihilus will accompany you to observe the mission. <laughs> Mothman's beard, welcome, welcome. Just going down for our first mission. Everything is looking so good. Look at the textures on my shepherd. I'm just realizing. Look at the skin. Ugh. Tell me more about the Protheans. What do you know about the Protheans? Just what they taught us in school. They were a technologically advanced species that ruled the galaxy 50,000 years ago. Then they vanished. Nobody really knows how or why, though I've heard plenty of theories. Hmm. But everyone Curious. Galactic civilization wouldn't exist without them. Their citadel is the very heart of galactic society, and without their mass relays, interstellar travel would be impossible. We all owe the Protheans a great debt. Weird that a super advanced alien species that is the the, the foundation of all of our technology now just disappeared one day. And y'all have no questions beyond that. I'd like to know more about Eden Prime before we touch down. It's a peaceful farming world, but it represents something much bigger. Eden Prime is one of our oldest and most successful colonies. It proved we were ready to face the challenges of settling new worlds, to forge a place for humanity beyond Earth. It symbolizes humanity's growth and evolution as a spacefaring species. And after this, it will be known as the world where humans made a discovery of galactic importance. Eden Prime is 
an example for the, the galaxy. Sounds like the perfect place to target if you're trying to make a make an example out of humans. Why is this beacon so important? All advanced galactic civilization is based on Prothean technology, even yours. If we hadn't discovered those Prothean ruins buried on Mars, we'd still be stuck on Earth. That was just a small data cache. Who knows what we can learn from this beacon? What if it's a weapons archive? We can't let it fall into the wrong hands. What kind of hands? Thought we're all working together. Like who? The Attican Traverse isn't the most stable sector of Citadel space. There are plenty of raiders and criminal groups active in the region. They might figure a Prothean beacon is worth the risk of attacking an alliance. The animation. Plus, Eden Prime is right on the border of the Terminus systems. The the animation it's it's so good for the time, but the way his lips were just flapping while he, while he was delivering that. The Attican Traverse is under Citadel protection. If the Terminus systems attack, it's an act of war. Technically, yes, but some of the species. See, it works better with aliens, right? Like you don't know what they would normally look like. The last thing the Council wants is to get dragged into a major conflict with the Terminus systems. We have to keep this low key. All right, all right, let's go. Just give the word, Captain. We should be getting close to Eden. Captain, we got a problem. What's wrong, Joker? Transmission. Seth Green, Eden tell Prime, me more. Sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. Oh, that doesn't look good. Get down. That seems like some death and destruction. That peak over like you seeing this shit? We are under attack, taking heavy casualties. I repeat, heavy casualties. We can't get evac. They came out of nowhere. We need Oh, some of these sounds, just some of these sound effects. Oh, Everything that all takes me back. That. No calm traffic at all. Just goes dead. There's nothing. Reverse and hold at 38.5. Oh, the little, <laughs> the little flaps, Status the little. Report. 17 hmm, minutes that's out. Curious. No Let me ships in the area. move my mouth flaps. Take us in, Joker. Fast and quiet. This mission just got a lot more complicated. A small strike team can move quickly without drawing attention. It's our best chance to secure the beacon. Grab your gear and meet us in the cargo hold. So one of the things. Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in. Come on, Jenkins. You gotta prove yourself right here. But don't do anything stupid. Also. Engaging stealth systems. Somebody was doing some serious digging here, Captain. Your team's the muscle in this operation, Commander. Go in heavy and head straight for the dig site. What about survivors, Captain? Helping survivors is a secondary objective. Excuse this me, Captain. Top priority. Approaching drop point we one. Always help. Nihilus, you're coming with us? I move faster on my own. Nihilus will scout okay, out ahead. Okay, cool for you, bud. He'll feed you status reports throughout the mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. Don't we don't sow any kind of mistrust within our crew. Understood. Ready able, sir. The mission's yours now, Shepard. Good luck. We are approaching drop point two. Here we go. I'm excited again. Uh, what I was about to say was uh, one of the big things I remember about Mass Effect 1 was the combat was not this place got hit perfect. The Hostiles everywhere. Keep your guard. To say the least. And it because it was it was based on their old games, right? Their older games were more about um, very tactical RPG combat. And so when they brought in this third person shooting element, it was it was not perfectly implemented at all. So they they went back and fixed it. Gas bags. Don't worry, they're harmless. Oh, I don't want to kill them then. They're chill.
<laughs> never learned to throw grenades. I, I barely remember the gameplay, so. It had the stop time effect, I think, that a lot of their games had back then, where you could, like, issue commands and stuff, and also give your shepherd commands. Look at how precise you can be now. Um, and so it's nice to see them embrace where the series went after this. It's interesting, too, in this game, there's no ammo. It's just as you shoot, the more you shoot in the bottom left, you can see there's, like, an overheat bar. So there was no ammo. It was just you would eventually overheat the more shots you you, you oh, took. Wow. What happened here? All right, squad, pull out the snipers. All right, squad, pull out the pistols. Oh, you can... That's right, you had a weapon wheel and you could tell your squad what to equip. I'm gonna trust that they know what they, they're good with and they're gonna they're gonna equip those weapons. Okay, left stick crouch. So much more zoomed in than I remember. So close to Shep's back here. It's just some more gas bags. Nothing dangerous out here. Oh, Jenkins. Oh, he's... He's... He's mega dead. <laughs> Deserves a bur burial. see that he receives a proper service once the mission is complete. But I need you to stay focused. Rip, bud. Aye, aye, man. I don't know. Does that just... I mean... <laughs> just, it's like... That's not a good soldier move, dude. He just kind of went over here and said, Oh, look at those things. And just stood there and took all those shots. <laughs> oh, what a, what an opening for Jenkins there, huh? Poor guy. He's back on his home planet. And then it tells us about Metagel. Isn't that nice? He's back on his home planet, finally. Finally ready to prove himself worthy of being on this ship. And he just gets destroyed. A lot of bodies. Squad screen. Oh, Caden's got some points. Let's make him our decryption boy. Give him point and sentinel. So I'm the kind of person who... So Caden is here. And then there's Ashley that we meet on this planet. And I kind of disliked both of them. They were both... Like, amongst all the alien people you could have in your squad, it kind of felt silly to have... These, these boring ass humans on your squad. But I'm gonna give them a second chance. You know, I was a, I was a kid when I first played these games. I was a, a baby boy. And so I wanna give them a second chance, but they are not starting out strong, that's, that's for sure. So yeah, there's a whole like squad uh, commanding mechanic. You can, you can give them all kinds of goofy commands. I remember playing this on my mom's laptop growing up. That's just how I played this first one for the first time. You know what? That is a pretty badass entry for for Ashley. Yike. Big yike. See, all I remember about Ashley, and I'm gonna have to like... I'm gonna have to remember here. All I remember about her in my head is all, all I have in my head is Space Racist. Thanks for your help, Commander. I 
think I was gonna make it. But I don't remember why I think that, so let's Gunner see. Gunner Chief Ashley Williams of the 212. He the one in charge here, ma'am? You okay? Are you wounded, Williams? You chill? A few scrapes and burns. Nothing serious. The others weren't so lucky. Oh, man. We were patrolling the perimeter when the attack hit. We tried to get off a distress call, but they cut off our communications. I've been fighting for my life ever since. What about your squad? Where's the rest of your squad? We tried to double back to the beacon, but we walked into an ambush. I don't think any of the others... I think I'm the only one left. Don't blame yourself. This isn't your fault, Williams. You couldn't have done anything to save them. This shit's yes, wild. We held our position as long as we could. That's an order. Don't blame the yourself. Us. The Geth haven't been seen outside the Vale in nearly 200 years. Why are they here now? The Geth, they baby. They must have come for the beacon. The dig site is close, just over that rise. It might still be there. Come with us. We could use your help, Williams. Aye, aye, ma'am. It's time for payback. All right, but before we do that, let me talk to you some more. What else do you know about the Geth? <laughs> just what I remember from history class back in school. They're synthetics, non-organic life forms with limited AI programming, created by the Quarians a few centuries ago. They were supposed to be a source of cheap labor, but ended up turning on the Quarians and drove them into exile. Well, after that, they just kind of disappeared behind the Perseus Veil. Nobody's really heard much from them since. So the Geth are a synthetic a life form controlled by an AI. I think they all operate under a hive mind, as far as I remember. Tell me everything you know about the Beacon. They were doing some digging out here to extend the monorail and expand the colony. A few weeks ago, they unearthed some Prothean ruins and the Beacon. Suddenly, every scientific expert in the colony was interested. That's when they brought us in to secure the site. I don't know much about the Beacon itself, but I heard one of the researchers say this could be the biggest scientific discovery of the century. And what happened what to all of them? The researchers at the dig site. I don't know. They set up camp near the beacon. The 232 was with them. Maybe their unit fared better than mine. Probably not. Describe what happened leading up to the attack. I need all we the were details. Sent out a couple of nights ago from the main colony to secure the area. It seemed like a routine patrol until the Geth hit us. We never knew they were coming. Have you seen a Turian specter around here? There aren't any Turians on Eden Prime. None that I've ever met. Not sure I'd be able to tell if one was a Spectre anyway. You'd, you'd be able to tell this guy. You'd this know. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Power to wipe out a whole platoon. Luckily, he's on our side. Sorry. Like I said, no Turians. Move out! <laughs> they didn't quite master, you know, the uh, transitions so much. So to go from just a normal conversation to move out. Okay, let's get let's get Ashley squared away with points. You're gonna be oh I thought I remember her being like a healing person. Let's get you points in the things you already have points in. You're a master of your mastery, okay? No helmet for us anymore. Can't keep that beautiful hair under wraps. Yeah, so, so far, what I remember of the game, it controls so much better. The beacon's at the far end of this trench. New armor. The scorpion is better in every way. Equipped. Now we look different. We don't have our N7 cool armor anymore. Boo. Now we look like boring soldier. Um, you good? Is that what's gonna happen to you? It it d destroys and degrades your suit of armor underneath you? That kinda sucks. How do I run? Oh, cover! I almost forgot there was cover. There's no one to fight here. I 
forgot how much this game was all about cover. There we go. There you go, Mothman's beard. I forgot they're like, you just throw them like straight forward. Kind of made them fun because, yeah, you could throw them kind of like behind cover and then blow them. Hey, bud. Don't you dare. I'm Commander Shepard. Can't take me out. All right. We're moving to secure the beacon. Everyone focus up. This is... Okay. This is the dig site. The beacon was right here. It must have been. You know moved. now, Mothman's oh, beard. You can do it. Hard to say. Maybe we'll know more after we check out the research camp. It's it's truly like you just add that layer of polish to the lighting, to the reflective, making things more reflective. Um, the textures just being high res. That's all these older games need sometimes, right? To make them so much more. You know, I don't subscribe to any of that stuff as much anymore. I do think. I at least need it to be high resolution, right? Uh, to 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 enjoy. But yeah, like it's just every yeah exactly everything just looks so much better. I, I was listening to uh, 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 Michael Huber of the Easy Allies, a, a, a content creator, journalist, whatever you want to say, uh, and he was just like, games today are just so much better. Than, than, than some games that we've played in the past in terms of just the technical capabilities in a lot of ways. And so it's just like, you know, I love, I think when it comes to 3D especially, especially from the, that PS3, early PS3 era, it, it was HD, yes, but the textures are not quite, you know, they weren't quite as polished as they can be now and as clean as they can be now. And there's no real way to play them um, at, as polished as they are now. As opposed to, you can get emulators for PS1, PS2 games and get the textures to be clean. You know, you can you can work with the emulator to do that kind of stuff with those games. Um, and I'm glad that the, the developers are coming back to these games that really just could use... There's a wipe down, really. It's all, all it really is, you know? It's just like a wipe down. You're cleaning it off, polishing it up a little bit um, to make it look better for, for today's sensibilities you think anyone got out of here alive if they were lucky maybe hiding up in the camp it's just on the top of this ridge up the ramps change of plans Shepard there's a small spaceport up ahead I want to check it out I'll wait for you there and this this suit of armor does not match my vibes at all I don't like it okay how's this pistol so better DPS, lower uh, capacity for for just slower reloads, basically, and um, lower accuracy. Same with a shotgun. It's just lower accuracy on the shotgun, so we'll take that new shotgun. And kind of the same for the pistol, so we'll take that as well. No, give me my pistol. No, wrong button. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. I'm pushing all the wrong buttons. No. Come come to me. There we go. <laughs> Our new pistol. Ooh, it's red. I like it. We now remember how to run. <clears throat> Looks like they hit the camp hard. I appreciate... Keep your guard up. When it comes to these re remasters and stuff, I appreciate some effort. And they clearly put a lot of effort into this. There's over 40 pieces of DLC uh, included in this. It's just they could they didn't have to go as hard as they did, but they did, and we appreciate it. Oh god, they're still alive. What did the Geth do to them? So the Geth made some creepos. Let's 
also the it's 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 sucking them dry, turning turning them into these basically zombies. Okay, what is? Damn it! I pushed the heal again. B is melee. Okay, Y is heal. I wasted two health kits, but we haven't really gotten hit with anything at the, up to this point, so we're probably okay. Let's see what's going on here. That door is closed. Security locks engaged. Some locked objects require decryption or electronics to access. If any squad member has the required talent, you will be able to unlock the object using the decryption or electronics interface or by spending Omni Gel. Advance to the center core. Use a left stick to move around the ring. Press A and B to move inward and outward. Oh, I remember loving this. This was such a good little hacking minigame. Humans, thank the maker. Yo, we have Hurry, the same haircut. Close the door before they come back. Don't worry, we'll protect you. Thank we got you. you. We we'll got your okay back. Now. It looks like everyone's gone. You're Dr. Warren, the one in charge of the excavation. Do you know what happened to the beacon? It was moved to the spaceport this morning. Manuel and I stayed behind to help pack up the camp. When the attack came, the Marines held them off long enough for us to hide. They gave their lives to save us. No one is saved. The age of humanity is ended. Soon, Whoa. only ruin and corpses will remain. Manuel, chill out. I could just leave. <laughs> Soon only ruin and corpses will remain. All right, I'm gonna, you guys just, just chill here. I'll be back. What else can you tell me about the attack? It all happened so fast. One second we were gathering up our equipment. The next we were hiding in the shed while the Geth swarmed over the camp. Agents of the destroyers, bringers of darkness, heralds of our extinction. We could hear the battle outside, gunfire, screams. I thought it would never end. Then everything went quiet. We just sat there, too afraid to move, until you came along. Did you notice a Turian in the area? <laughs> Where's? I saw him. Does any, has anyone seen Nihilus? Of the enemy, he was here before the attack. That's impossible. Nihilus was with us in the Normandy before the attack. He couldn't have been here. I I'm sorry, Manuel's still a bit unsettled. We haven't seen your Turian. We've been hiding in here since the attack. Can you tell me anything about the beacon? It's some type of data module from a galaxy-wide communications network. Remarkably well-preserved. It could be the greatest scientific discovery of our lifetime. Miraculous new technologies. Yo, it's space advances. Facebook. Who knows what secrets are locked inside? We have unearthed the heart of evil. Awakened the beast. Unleashed the darkness. Manuel, please. This isn't the time. Like, imagine, like... Aliens are like, we found something. It seems to be part of a wide communications network where people would put up their 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 comings and goings of of each day. It's 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 fascinating. It's called Facebook. We'll we'll learn so much from it. It'll teach us so much. And then it's just like, I'm taking a shit right now. Lol. What's wrong with your assistant? Manuel has a brilliant mind, but he's always been a bit unstable. Genius and madness are two sides of the same coin. Is it madness to see the future? To see the destruction rushing towards us? To understand there is no escape? No hope? No. I am not mad. I'm the only sane one left. Oh. I gave him an extra dose of his meds after the attack. See, look, this is... This is what you call a renegade option. <laughs> when I was talking about the good side and light side, this is where you go, you go mean. And you get points to be meaner. But we're not mean. Williams, take us to the spaceport. You can't stop it. Nobody can stop it. Night is falling. The darkness of eternity. Hush, my Shh, Fern doesn't know Mothman's beard. Fern doesn't know we're headed to the end times. I, I summarized this game for Fern as a descri I described it as space friends hanging out while the world falls apart around them and they try to save the day several times. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm mostly joking.
You can you can you can toss all the stuff out there. Oh, I got we got a bunch of points. I forgot. The menus are nice. <clears throat> They're clean. Let's just get our charm all the way up to the max we can right now. Just so we, we, we know we can get through some dialogue or get through some situations just through dialogue. Wow, we actually have more points in Renegade right now. So you can see the bar on the top and the bottom there. Paragon on the top, Renegade on the bottom. Oh, perfect. <clears throat> I always have to remember to come in here and, and add, add some stuff. All right, you're a healer, Caden. Welcome to Heal Town. Our healer and our decryptor. And you'll be our assault rifle lady. All right, you two stay in there. Can I close this? Just close that for ya. Keep y'all safe. There's so many items! All here in this first section. The Avenger 2, baby! That's the other thing, you have to like equip everything for everyone, but pretty much. So you You try the scimitar out, my guy, and you get the Avenger 1. Actually. Let's get you the Banshee and give Ashley the Avenger one since she is the assault rifle queen. There he is. There's our boy. Sarah. Another Turian. This isn't your mission, Saren. What are you doing here? The Council thought you could use some help on this one. Uh-oh. That sure sounds like a bad boy. Bad boy. Bad guy. The situation's bad. Don't worry. I've got it under control. Uh-oh. What was that noise? What is that? Off in the distance. You can barely hear Ashley. Hello. You're not gonna be a menace for the entire series of games, are you? Oh boy. Y'all, I think that wait, where are they? Oh. I think they might be a menace. Where's Ashley? No pointy clouds today. Where is Ashley at? Is she still in there? She hit Ashley. Get out of here, you you goober. Come on. Gotta walk her out of here. Step by step. Oh my gosh, did Caden get stuck the same way? Okay. 
I was about to scream. Come on, y'all. Time to save the galaxy. It's like more work to be in cover. I think later in the in the combat encounters it's better, but right now, way way too much work. Ready? We're gonna perfectly throw this grenade. Nope, didn't work. Hello? Hello? Rip, dude. Damn. Something's moving over behind those crates. Wait, don't, don't shoot. I'm one of you. I'm human. What are you doing sneaking around back we there? We need more info before we all shoot you. I'm sorry, you. I was hiding from those creatures. My name's Powell. I saw what happened to that Turian. The other one shot him. Other one? What the hell are you talking about? There were two Turians here. Your friend and another one he called Saren. I think they knew each other. Your friend seemed to relax. He let his guard down. And Saren killed him. Shot him right in the back. I'm just lucky he didn't see me behind the crates. Rip to Nihilus. Get some Bible thump in the chat for poor, poor Nihilus. Just got shotted in the back by a friend. We were told a Prothean beacon was brought to the spaceport. What happened to it? It's over on the other platform. Probably where that guy Saren was headed. He hopped on the cargo train right after he killed your friend. I knew that beacon was trouble. Everything's gone to hell since we found it. First that damn mothership showed up, then the attack. They killed everyone. Everyone. If I had been behind the crates, I'd be dead too. How'd How they not find the you, bro? Who survived? Why didn't anyone else try to hide behind the crates? They never had a chance. I, I, I was already behind the crates when the attack started. Wait a minute. You were hiding behind the crates before the attack? I, I was napping, bro. Sometimes I need a nap to get through my shift. I, I sneak off behind the crates to grab 40 winks where the supervisor can't find me. You survived because you're lazy? Lucky for if you, bro. If you snuck off for that nap, you'd probably be dead just like all the others. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I don't really want to think about it. Dude's gonna be haunted we by that for the rest that of his life. Before it's too late. Take the cargo train. That's where the other Turian went. I, I, I can't stay here. I need to get away from all this. Rip Nihilus. Oh, we're getting shot at. Oh, one hit kill with the grenade. I forgot how fun the grenade was. It was this, it's basically a frisbee. So good. Is there nothing, nothing else for us here? I just like to be sure. I like to be sure, chat. Oh, that's right. I have powers. Is there not an easier way to access these powers? Hello? 
Bro came charging it. Move up, move up, team. Hold on, is there an easier way to use powers? Do I have to like... Pull that menu up every time, I don't remember. I can map it, I can map it. It says map. Okay, map, throw. Well, what, what did I map it to? I was like, where's the last one? Just dead with one little swipe. Swipe of the hand. What does it map to, chat? We'll find out. We'll find out later. We're coming for you, Saren. Me and Nihilus were supposed to do a bunch of missions together. Set the charges. Destroy the entire colony. Leave no evidence that we were here. <coughs> Synchronized with the machine. I love that every being in this world just leaves their 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 weapons right above their butt. The butt holster is my favorite holster, chat. Oh, we have five minutes. Disarm. Demolition charges. The Geth must have planted them. Hurry! We need to find them all and shut them down. That's one. Leave me alone. I'm disarming bombs. I'm taking cover on it. Okay, when you map an ability, it's just mapped to the bumper button. Glad I know how to disarm bombs. I think that, that the mapping and using of abilities gets better in future games. Oh, Cadence. Caden's down. Isn't he? Can I revive you? He's just dead, Chad. He's dead forever now. <laughs> the fact that melee is a one hit. It's very funny. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just going to look in here before I d defuse this bomb. He's 
back. Let me heal him. There you go, bud. Hurry up, Caden. Double time. We got galaxy saving to do, brother. Yeah, there's so much of this that I, it's just like fuzzy memories, you know? Like, I honestly didn't remember that Nihilus just died like that. I love the melee <laughs> chat. So in later games, the melee gets a lot better. It becomes, uh, Basically, you get like a sword that, uh, a holographic sword thing. And so it's, it's way more obvious and, and like explainable how the melee works that way. So it's just funny here that it's just like. So you see, you, did you see in earlier scenes, Fern, that like, or, or when I was picking classes, they, there's the. Omni tool, the like orange thing, the like digital orange thingy. I don't know how to describe it. That is what becomes your melee attack in future games, as far as I remember. So it's funny here that it's just a bap. It's just bap. I'll point it out again when we see it later. I mean, maybe it has more to do with the class we chose. I don't remember for sure. But yeah, it's just funny that it's just like... A swing. Look at this. A secret storage locker all the way over here for those who bother to look. You gotta love it. So there's a lot of like weapon customization stuff that I don't fully like remember how to like use. That's true. The smack. Here we go. Anti-personnel. Toxic. Weapons force. Let's go with weapons force. Wait, that's on that. No, 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 no. Get rid of that. No. Unequip. Uh, unequip. Let's do this one instead. Yeah, there you go. Oh, my pistol. You put the hammerhead rounds. And improve sighting. Because our pistols are our bad boy right now. Oh, here's the beacon. We found it, y'all. But before we look at that, that, we gotta go over here and see if there's any secrets over here for us. Because that's the most important thing. Not the beacon, you know. Our commander might have said the beacon is priority over even other human lives, but no. Secret stashes are the priority. All right, beacon, what do you got for me? Normandy, the beacon is secure. This is amazing. Actual working Prothean technology. Unbelievable. It wasn't doing anything like that when they dug it up. Something must have activated it. Roger, Normandy. Standing by. Oh, Caden. Back up, bro. Yo, the jumping tackle. Out the way, Caden. I'll become the chosen one. Jump. No, don't touch Oh, it's so good, chat.
mystery. Oh. And look at this ship. We identified the ship that the matriarch Eden Prime, the Normandy, a human alliance vessel. It was under the command of Captain Anderson. They managed to save the colony. And the beacon. One of the humans may have used it. Saren Angi. Matriarch said, whatever, dude. Let me turn the game up a little bit. Doctor? Dr. Chakwas. I think she's waking up. You had us worried there, Shepard. How are you feeling? Doc, I'm awake. What happened, bro? How did I end up here? Why am I, was I in my... Medivac. About 15 hours. Something happened down there with the beacon, I think. Jesus, out for 15 I hours? I some kind of security field when I approached it. You had to push me out of the way. Don't blame me. I'm such a good commander. You had no way to know what would happen. Actually, we don't even know if that's what set it off. Unfortunately, we'll never get the chance to find out. The beacon exploded. A system overload, oh. maybe. And the blast knocked you cold. Williams and I had to carry you back here to the ship. I appreciate it. Physically, you're fine. But I detected some unusual brain activity. Abnormal beta waves. I also noticed an increase in your rapid eye movement. Signs typically associated with intense dreaming. I saw... I'm not sure what I saw. Death, destruction... Nothing's really clear. Hmm. I better add this to my report. It may... Oh. Captain Anderson. How's our XO holding up, Doctor? When all the readings look normal, I'd say the commander's going to be fine. Glad to hear We're you. okay. Shepard, I need to speak with you. In private. Aye, aye, Captain. I'll be in the mess if you need me. Sounds like that beacon hit you pretty hard, Commander. Are you sure you're okay? Feel bad about Jenkins. He turned around and got just obliterated by some dinky robots. I don't like soldiers dying under my command. Jenkins wasn't your fault. You did a good job, Shepard. Did we leave Gunnery Chief Williams back on Eden Prime? I figured we could use a soldier like her. She's been reassigned to the Normandy. She was pretty badass. Williams is a good soldier. She deserves it. Lieutenant Elenko agrees with you. That's why I added her to our crew. All right, anyways, you wanted to talk. You said you needed to see me in private, Captain? I won't lie to you, Shepard. Things look bad. Nihilus is dead. The beacon was destroyed and Geth are invading. The Council's going to want answers. You should tell them everything. I didn't do anything wrong, Captain. Hopefully the Council can see that. I'll stand behind you and your report, Shepard. You're a damned hero in my books. That's not why I'm here. It's Saren, that other Turian. Saren's a specter, one of the best. Uh oh. Legend. But if he's working with the Gith, it means he's gone rogue. A rogue specter's trouble. Saren's dangerous, and he hates humans. Why would he hate humans? What have we ever done that's bad? Why? He thinks we're growing too fast, taking over the galaxy. A lot of aliens think that way. Most of them don't do anything about it. But Saren has allied himself with the Geth. I don't know how, I don't know why. I only know it had something to do with that beacon. You were there just before that beacon self-destructed. Did you see anything? Any clue that might tell us what Saren was after? Tell him the vision. Just before I lost consciousness, I had some kind of... Explain it to vision. us as well, please. A vision? A vision of what? I saw synthetics. Geth, maybe. 
Slaughtering people. Butchering them. We need to report this to the Council, Shepard. That I had a vision? You think they're gonna buy that? What are we gonna tell them? I had a bad dream? We don't know what information was stored in that beacon. Lost Prothean technology? Blueprints for some ancient weapon of mass destruction? Whatever it was. Saren took it. But I know Saren. I know his reputation is politics. He believes humans are a blight on the galaxy. This attack was an act of war. He has the secrets from the beacon. He has an army of Geth at his command, and he won't stop until he's wiped humanity from the face of the galaxy. Not if I can help it. I'll find some way to take him down. It's not Classic that anime easy. protagonist. He's a specter. He can go anywhere, do almost anything. That's why we need the council on our side. Can I expose him? We prove Saren's gone rogue, and the council will revoke his specter status. I'll contact the ambassador and see if he can get us an audience with the council. He'll want to see us as soon as we reach the Citadel. We should be getting close. Head up to the bridge and tell Joker to bring us into dock. All right, see, and now this is what I'm talking about, chat. Now we can explore the ship, get a read on everybody's situation. How everybody's feeling after that mission. We took quite a few hits, but we're still standing. Before we do that, let's get a save in and a quick break. Hydration, stretching, vibing, whatever you need to do for this break, do it and we'll be right back for more Mass Effect. Thank you for hanging out. Let's play some let's play some some good tunes for this. Chilled e chilled electronic. We'll play for the break for Mass Effect. We'll be right back in just a little bit. Thanks for hanging out and enjoying our journey through Mass Effect. We just got back to the ship. Things are happening. Villains are, are born. Okay, be right back. Stretch out, drink some water, do whatever you need to do. BRP.
I return. Hello, 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 hello. Oh. Let's, keep, let's keep it going. I'm seeing something on this screen that was not from the original game. Oh, wait, hold on. Audio is not on. I'm seeing something on this screen that was not in the original game. Photo mode. Oh my gosh. Look at my shepherd. There's nothing fancy. There's no poses my character can do. Too dark in this in this part of the ship. We got some filters. Oh my gosh! Ow. Okay, they got some fun stuff. But I was really hoping for some like fun poses and stuff. Well, we got a photo mode chat, so that's nice. What's here in the back of the ship? Bunch of purple, purple milk. Glad to see you're okay, Commander. I'm in tip-top shape. Commander, I'm glad to see you're okay. Losing Jenkins was hard on the crew, and I'm glad we didn't lose you too. How you holding up? Things were pretty rough down there. Yeah, you never get used Things to Things got wacky and wilds. Doesn't seem right somehow. But at least you stopped Saren from wiping out the whole colony. Cat, welcome. You don't know what this is at first glance. It's Mass Effect, baby. The Mass Effect Legendary Edition. The remaster of Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 for modern uh, consoles and PC. It looks beautiful. We're playing, Ma we're starting at the start, Mass Effect 1. Um, we did about three Returnal streams in a row, and Returnal was getting to be a little uh, grating in terms of it just being a painful thing to play through and just continuously die and be heartbroken by. So we decided we were gonna get wrapped up in the hype for Mass Effect and hop in to Mass Effect 1 here with the Legendary Edition. I am doing okay. I'm doing okay. Sleep's been weird lately, like it always is. Um, you know, I don't know. There's a lot of stress in my brain lately, and I don't know why. But we're doing okay. How about you, Cat? You helped. I like that. That's just such a... <laughs> you helped. I couldn't have done it without you. We're Marines. We stick together, and I'm just sorry that we lost Jenkins. I'll be missed. Yeah, I wish I could have done something to save him. I was there. You did everything right. It was just bad luck. He literally ran it's from outside of a rock. Down, Cruz. Our first mission ends with one specter killing another. The Citadel Council's not going to be happy about that. Probably use it to lever more concessions out of the Alliance. Don't worry about it. We're going to figure this out. Whatever's going on, the captain can handle it. Absolutely, Commander. Anything else before we head ashore? Any advice on how to act in front of an ambassador? I don't meet many politicians. An ambassador? I just follow standard operational procedure. Salute anything you can't eat or kill. Good luck, ma'am. Jeez. Yeah, I hope you're doing well, Cat. We're back. We're back on deck. Ashley, welcome to the squad, by the way. Welcome. I'm glad you're okay, Commander. The crew could use some good news after what happened to Jenkins. Wait, you literally just joined the crew. I mean, I that's good good uh, empathy and, and, and awareness of the situation on your part, Ashley, but you just joined the crew. Jenkins was a valuable part of this crew. Part of me feels guilty over what happened. If Jenkins was still alive, I might not be here. You're a good soldier. You're a good soldier, Williams. Hey. You belong on the Normandy. Thanks, Commander. I appreciate that. 
How are you holding up after your post getting destroyed by Geth? Things were pretty rough down there. Are you okay? I've seen friends die before. Comes with being a Marine. But to see my whole unit wiped out, and you never get used to seeing dead civilians. But things would have been a lot worse if you hadn't shown up. <laughs> Again, I can go, you helped. We couldn't have done it without you, Williams. <laughs> Thanks, Commander. I have to admit, I was a little worried about being assigned to the Normandy. It's nice when someone makes you feel welcome. Welcome to the squad, baby. I think you're baby. gonna fit in here just fine, Williams. Thanks, Commander. Give me those Paragon points. Ooh, my locker. Ooh, even more secret <laughs> weapons. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? I like you, Dr. Chakwas. Tell me more. How did you end up serving on an Alliance ship? I enlisted right out of med school. Earth always seemed boring to me. Too safe. Too secure. I figured the colonies were teeming with exotic adventure. I wanted to travel the stars, tending the wounds of tough soldiers okay. with piercing eyes and sensitive souls. <laughs> Turns out military life isn't quite as romantic as I'd imagined. But humanity needs the Alliance if we want to keep expanding through the Traverse. And the Alliance always needs good doctors. So I stayed on to do my part. Ever think you made the wrong choice? Sometimes I think about opening a private practice back on Earth. Or maybe taking a position at one of the new med centers out in the colonies. But there's something special about working on soldiers. If I left the Alliance now, I'd feel like I was abandoning them. What do you know about Captain Anderson? I've served with him for a few tours now. I was going to say, she, she's got, it seems like she's got a lot of knowledge. To crack the, whip. the crew knows he's seen pretty much anything they'll ever run into. And he cares about the people under his command. Captain Anderson does seem like a chill dude. How well do you know the lieutenant? I'd never worked with him before this mission. But he has an impressive service record. Over a dozen special commendations. Tends to keep to himself, though. Maybe because of the headaches. Dr. Chocolates. What does that have to do with it? Well, most biotics now use the L3 implants. Lieutenant Alenko was wired with the old L2 configuration. Sometimes there are complications. I didn't doesn't use the L3 implants. <laughs> what kind of complications? Severe mental disabilities, insanity, crippling physical pain. There's a long list of horrific side effects. Caden's lucky. He just gets migraines. I should go. Black soul, welcome, welcome. We're here today playing. We we were we're taking a mini break from uh Returnal, and we're here playing Mass Effect 1 in the new Mass Effect Legendary Edition, which is the remaster. Oh, well, well, we're not ready to talk to the captain yet. Oh, wait, we did talk to the captain. This is the remaster of the first, or all the three Mass Effect games. I guess first three. There is Mass Effect Andromeda as well. Um, yeah, and we're pretty stoked about being able to return to Mass Effect after all these years. Go speak to Joker when you're ready. Tell him to bring the Normandy into dock. I'm just gonna sit here with my hands on my table, staring at my blank screen. Yo, he gets a double bed? I mean, it's technically just one bed. You know, a single bed times two, but that's not fair. Let me in. Where's my room? Do I have a room? It didn't work. I just got some XP for hitting A on that. Works for me. I know, I know. I gotta go talk to Seth Green. I'm glad you're okay, Commander. Losing Jenkins was hard enough on the crew.
Okay, we're getting some more knowledge in the codex. Pretty big crew, if we're being honest. So at least... At least, what, like 20 on this ship? Good timing, Commander. I was just about to bring us into the Citadel. See that taxpayer money at work. Here we go. This is the Citadel, the hub of all space chaos. All space beings within the Alliance and within the civilization. Now it's loud. Is it loud for everyone else? Look at the size of that ship. The Ascension, flagship of the Citadel fleet. Well, size isn't everything. Why so touchy, Joker? I'm just saying you need firepower too. Look at that monster. Its main gun could rip through the barriers in any ship in the Alliance fleet. Good thing it's on our side then. Citadel Control, this is SSV Normandy, requesting permission to land. Stand by for clearance, Normandy. It almost reminds me of like Final Fantasy VIII, clearance where the you, may begin your you go from the pre-rendered cutscenes to the in-game footage as they're reacting to the. Tower, it just reminds me of that vibe. Normandy. So good, chat. And the music, ugh. All oh, the load screens are like nothing now. Those used to this be so is long. An outrage! The council would step in if the Geth attacked a Turian colony. Oh God. The Turians don't this found colonies guy. on the borders of the Terminus systems, Ambassador. Humanity was well aware of the risks when you went into the Traverse. What about Seren? You can't just ignore a rogue specter. I demand action. This freaking guy. You don't get guy. to make demands of the council, Ambassador. Citadel Security is investigating your charges against Saren. We will discuss the CSEC findings at the hearing, not before. Captain Anderson, I see you brought half your crew with you. Just the ground team from Eden Prime. In case you had any questions. I have the mission reports. I assume they're accurate? They are. Sounds like you convinced the Council to give us an audience. They were not happy about it. They were Sarah not happy agent. about it. They don't like him being accused of treason. Saren's a threat to every human colony out there. He needs to be stopped. The Council has to listen to us. Settle down, Commander. You've already done more than enough to jeopardize your candidacy Go. for the Spectres. The mission on Eden Prime was a chance to prove you could get the job done. Instead, Nihilus ended up dead and the beacon was destroyed. Chill That's out, bro. Not hers. Then we better hope the CSEC investigation turns up evidence to support our accusations. Otherwise, the Council might use this as an excuse to keep you out of the specters. Come with me, Captain. I Come want to go with over me, a few Captain. Before the hearing. Shepard, you and the others can meet us at the Citadel Tower, top level. I'll make sure you have clearance to get in. And that's why I hate politicians. Agreed. Gotta go to the tower. Here's the map of the area we're in. So this is some of the best parts of the, the entire franchise, really. Is getting to end up in a big space, a new area, and to just like... Just explore. Just hang out and take it all in. It's just so good. Especially now in crispy, with a crispy FPS. My, I assume this is, I don't know what I'm running at right now. I assume I gotta be running at 120 at least. Oh, 
Alliance Patrol report. Captain Hendrickson reported some unusual energy readings during a patrol of the Argus Row cluster. She had particular concerns about the Hydra system, but was recalled before a team could investigate further. No patrols are scheduled for that sector. Do you want to send in a recon team? Okay, some, some knowledge. Probably giving us a little bit of a... Yeah, a side quest to go check out that area at some point. It's the projection system for the... The council. Yeah, this is some of my favorite stuff. Is just being let loose to kind of see what's going on, see what's what in this in this land. I understand what you're saying, but these allegations are very look at these aliens. Look at these weirdos. This is serious. My reputation. So yes, there is. We we were playing with it a little bit ago back on the ship. Yes, there's a full-on camera mode, uh, photo mode now. Big boy. Look at this, you can really get in depth uh, on these computer screens and stuff. You're not looking at anything important, bud. You're not looking at anything important. There's nothing on here. Really get in here and get the details. This is probably great for cosplayers, right? I think Bioware has always been great for cosplayers as far as giving out details and showing models and stuff. But you can really get in here and, like, look at the weapons. You know. Look at this bug boy. There's, you know, you can play with the saturation, brightness, contrast, and there's a bunch of filters. We kind of played around with these. There's a blinding one here in a second. Here, I think it's this next one. Ugh. That's some, like, cell shading-esque one. And then this is, like, a dot matrix printer. Photo modes are great, and I'm glad it was embraced here. You can hide the player. You can hide the, the other party members. Enemies. That's a good way to find out who's an enemy. Oh, none of these people are enemies. <laughs> yeah, it's it look. It's very good. It's a very good photo mode. What's going on here? Hello there, human. Sincere apology, but I am here on business and cannot be distracted right now. You seem distressed. Is there something I can do to help? Alarmed response. You overheard that, did you? This is all going so wrong, and it is the Asari Consorts. I love these dudes. She's the one who started all this. Because their voices are so monotone, they have to, like, say out loud <laughs> the emotion behind their responses. What did this Asari do to get you so upset? I cannot speak more about this problem. It is too sensitive. Suffice it to say, she has compromised my authority as a diplomat. Where is she? You're, you're so sad, I want to help. Where can I find the Sasari consort? She is across the bridge from here. Her offices are easy enough to spot. Good day, human. Pleased greeting. Human, it is always good to see <laughs> your kind. I love him. I am Ambassador Kalen. Genuine query. Is there something I can do for you this day? Why do you explain what you're about to say? Our people communicate less through words and more through scent and slight movements. Plainly, we discovered our vocal expression was not enough to convey the feelings of our conversations to other species. Why do you bother, Kalen? These Earth Clan don't really care about our ways. Remorseful response, Din. You don't truly believe that. And if you do, I am very sorry for you. Right? I, I can detect I can detect a lot of emotion in this guy's voice. Tell me more about your species. Genuine enthusiasm. I delight in telling the history of my people. It is agreeable to share our culture with others. Tell me about the history and origins of the Elcor. 
The Elcor were just beginning to explore Council's space when the Asari first made contact with us. With their help, we discovered the relay closest to our system, and from there the Citadel. Proudly. Within one lifetime we established a regular route to the Citadel, and quickly became one of the more active species living on this great station. I'd like to know more about the culture of the Elcor. Frankly. We Elcor prefer the safety and familiarity of our own colonies to the confines of space travel. Our society is built on small, tight-knit groups. Though we are always welcoming to outsiders, our government tends to be very stable. Our people are not very comfortable with sudden changes. What do you do here? Modestly. What do you do I here? I work to bring the problems and the requests of the Elcor groups to the attention of the Council. Ha! They only give us these positions to keep us quiet. The Council doesn't care about our races. Chastising rebuke. Your tone is inappropriate, Din. This human is not to blame for your malcontent or your misconceived suspicions. Goodbye, Ambassador. Sincere farewell. Good day to you, human. Enjoy your time on the Citadel. The Eeyore species. Alright, what's your, 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 your whole thing, man? You seem bitter. Earth Clan, you are in the wrong place, I think. Your ambassador is next door in the large office. Chastising remark. Don't be so rude, Dan. <laughs> At least introduce yourself. <sighs> I am Din Korlak, Volus Ambassador. Is there something I can do for you, Earth Clan? Why so cranky? You seem to have a bit of a chip on your shoulder, Din. You humans are new to the Citadel, and yet the Council has granted you great favor. <sighs> Chastising rebuke, Din. Your species has always been granted many concessions. Volus territory has expanded ten the Volus. since coming to the Citadel. <laughs> Details. We still have no real say in the decisions that affect Citadel space. Tell me more. I'd like to know more about the Volus. I'm sure our history and culture would bore you, Earth Clan. I want to know more. I'm asking. Actually, I would like to know more about your history. My people came to the Citadel shortly after the Asari and Salarians had discovered it. We were instrumental in establishing a standardized galactic economy. However, despite our long association with the Citadel and our many contributions to galactic society, we still do not hold a seat on the Council. It's messed up. Tell me about Volus culture. We are tribal by nature, but our ways are not violent. We barter and trade our lands and tribe members in order to increase status. Larger tribes often engulf smaller ones and eventually split again. Our society is very malleable, and our government is always shifting and changing. Since we're not physically adept, we trade our services for protection. See, it's just like, they built such an interesting universe with Mass Effect. What is this place? You are in the embassy for the Volus and the Elcor. Your ambassador is next door, in his own office. In this shared space, I aid my fellow Volus, when I'm not being interrupted. I'm just trying to learn more. What is it you do here? I look out for the best interests of the Volus people. No easy task considering how often we are overlooked by the Council. Chastising rebuke, Din. The Council favors your species greatly. You are naive. The Earth Clan will be invited to the Council long before our species will. Why aren't the Elcor or Volus part of the Council? All species must prove themselves before they join the Council. All but the Earth Clans, it would seem. Dismissive. 
Ignore the Volus <laughs> Ambassador, human. He is incorrect in his assessment. Really? How long have we been waiting? How long do you think we'll continue to wait? Bah, this talk is wasted on the humans. Goodbye, Ambassador. Yes, yes. Good day, Earth Clan. Clearly, we weren't going to get anywhere with that guy. So, these bug people are just like maintenance workers. They just fix the ship up. Station. What's in here? What's in the secret room? Here we go. Look at all the beautiful species. Good day, Commander. The human ambassadors up the stairs, first room on the right. You know who I am? Yes, I receive reports on all newly arrived dignitaries and notable people. What is this place? This is the Presidium. More specifically, you are at the Citadel Embassies. If you have more questions, please access Savina. What's that? Oh, Avina is the virtual guide for the Citadel. Feel free to access the terminal yourself. What's your name? What do you do here? My name is Sephiria. I'm the administrative assistant for the embassies. You seem to be distracted. The embassies are the hub of all Citadel politics. <laughs> when you represent trillions of citizens, it tends to get a little busy. I should be going now. I get it. Have a it. pleasant day. You want me to uh, stop bothering you? So this is an Asari. This is a uh, Salarian. They're the nerds of space. <laughs> Before we talk to Avina, let's go and let's go on this side. See if there's more embassies. Just another human. I can't believe I landed a job here. This place is fantastic. Get some codex pieces and some XP. Human, delighted, welcome. It is good to meet you. It's just fun to uh, explore. Alrighty, Fern. Because you'll never know what you'll end up getting, like, as far as, like, missions and stuff that you can unlock just because you're walking around and talking to people. Oh. Which, well, that was loud. Diplomatic advisory warning. The following message was transmitted from an untraceable account to multiple recipients across the extranet. Further monitoring of the situation is warranted, my fellow Biotic. You have been selected to receive the transmission because of our shared plight. Few understand us. Few to fewer tolerate us. We must stand together. We must build our own new world. Come, join us in the Hawking Ada Cluster. Only as one body can we right the wrongs done to our kind. So the Biotics are forming... Not an army, but they're... They're forming together. Under some cult... Biotic co commune, they call it here. Oh, we leveled up. Maybe that's what that noise was. <laughs> Did we level up? Super loud. Two more points than that. Let's get a. Let's get up to barrier here. And point in pistols, and we'll, we'll get a point in throw. Let's get these 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 uh, abilities leveled up right quick. Oh, everyone, everyone leveled up. Go up another level of encryption. Can overheat weapons and damage enemies with that. Let's get you a few levels in first aid. Get 
to a point on overload. You kind of be an all, all around. Melee is greatly increased here for you, and we'll get your health up too. Headache day. Okay, let's talk to Executor Palin. Commander Shepard, I didn't expect to see you here. Did Ambassador Udina send you? Agawar, what? I came on my own. I need information. You humans are always so curious, always sticking your fingers into someone else's pie. Is that the right expression? Uh, never mind, forget I asked. Was there something you needed, Commander? I get the feeling you're not too fond of humans. No, I just don't trust your kind. Not yet. You I get the feeling you're a racist. all the power you can get, and you're being given a lot. If the Council wants to make humanity their new favorite pet, that's their It's, it's not that simple. But I don't have to like it. What do you know about the Spectres? They're the right hand of the Council, or so they like to be called. More like the underhanded side of the Council. What do you have against the Spectres? I can't abide any organization that considers itself above the law, especially when it's left up to each individual specter to decide when and how to bend the Oh rules. no. Sticking white wear? Oh no. Tell me about CSEC. CSEC provides necessary police and security services throughout the Citadel. We're a civilian government agency, though many of our members have had military training. Of course, as the seasick representative to the council, I spend most of my time liaising between the two. He's basically a cop. He's basically a police chief. Tell me about your investigation into Saren. Sorry, Commander. I don't make a habit of giving out details about ongoing investigations. Fine, bud. I'll be going now. Goodbye, Commander. Don't tell me then. I'm gonna snoop around anyways. Yo, this is the the council member bar. Or what's going on here? <laughs> what do you want? Oh, commander. Yeah, that's right. Is there something I could do for you? Relax, private. This isn't an inspection. <clears throat> right. Sorry. What can I do for you, commander? What can you tell me about the Asari consort? I uh, well, she's an Asari who works here. As that is, she helps people with. Things. You never went to see her, did you, Fredericks? I, uh, no, I never did. Uh, I couldn't afford it. it Bragging half a year's credits about just meeting to the consort. To talk to her. Can you at least tell me where I can find her? Sure. She's across the bridge from the embassies. Thanks, kid. Have fun. Try not to get into too much trouble. I will. Have fun, that is. Again, Ashley just joined the crew and is acting like. Like she just, she can just. It's like when you meet, make that friend that's just too overly familiar right away. I don't have time to talk now. I'm very busy. Okay, jeez. Hello, Commander. Can I get you something? What have you got? Give me the good Information stuff. Information mostly. Oh. Would you like to know about some points of interest nearby? Never mind. Yeah, tell me. What's going on around here? Well, you found the embassies. Not much going on here. Across the bridge, you'll find the bank, the Emporium, and Shaira's. If you haven't heard of her, you soon will. If you need supplies, you can try the markets one level below. For entertainment, I try Flux or Cora's Den. What is Shaira's? Tell me more. The consort? Uh, she entertains clients who can afford mm. her services. Most Shaira of the, the consort. visited her at one time or another. She's a very powerful woman, but also very respected. Now tell me about these bars. Tell me about Flux and Cora's Den. Well, Flux has gambling and dancing, certainly more lively than this place. Cora's Den, on the other hand, well, let's just say it's livelier and deadlier all at the same time. Thanks for the info, barman. Goodbye. So long, Commander. Have a pleasant day. Just stand out on this balcony. Hello, alien bug. Just doing your work. I respect it. 
Out of the way. <laughs> this place seems strange. Wish there were more humans around. Bro. Except different cultures, my man. Accept and embrace it. All right, let's talk to the robot AI. Tell us more, Avina. Allow me to be your guide. Greetings and welcome to the Presidium. My name is Avina, and I am pleased to be your virtual guide throughout this level of the Citadel Space Station. Are you real, dude? What the fuck? So are you a person or a program? I am a fully interactive virtual intelligence. Program to provide spontaneous better humans at predetermined locations of interest throughout this level of the Citadel. I may also be contacted through any of the Presidium VI terminals, should you require assistance. Can you, I mean, like, just imagine if humans who think they're the top of the, the world find out they're, like, nothing compared to all these other civilizations and, and, and alien species. Like, they would be just, we would just be shitty. We would just be so shitty. So many of us would just be like, ugh, whatever, aliens. I want more humans around here. Bleh. It's a very realistic view. Give me the tour. You are standing at Presidium Tourism Terminal 1. On either side of this lobby are the embassies of the various Citadel races, along with CSEC headquarters. On the far end of this level, you can see the Citadel Tower, where the Council meets regularly to discuss matters of interstellar importance. I want to know more about Citadel security. Citadel security about the cops. serves as law enforcement for all regions of the Citadel, though the majority of officers serve in the wards. Executor Palin, a Turian, is the current head of CSEC, but individuals from virtually every species across Citadel space serve as officers beneath him. If you wish to learn more, Executor Palin's office is located in the CSEC headquarters just across the lobby. Yo, is there, are there Elcor cops? Do they just walk into a room and they're like, intimidating scream get down on the ground <laughs> intimidating growl i'll pull the trigger you son of a bitch tell me about the embassies each species in citadel space important enough to be consulted on matters of galactic politics maintains an embassy on the presidium the Volus were the first non-council species to be granted an embassy, roughly 2,384 galactic standard years ago. As Citadel space has expanded, more embassies have been added. The most recently added embassy belongs to your own species, humanity. It was added 19 galactic standard years ago. Only 19 years ago. Despite some rather vocal opposition. Why were people trying to keep my species out? Some species felt humanity was given preferential treatment. It often takes a century or more before a new species is granted an embassy. The Council gave a great deal of thought to this matter. In the end, they decided humanity's impact on Citadel space was significant enough to warrant an embassy. What do you think, Robot? Do you agree with their decision? I am not programmed to make that kind of qualified judgment. Boo. My code is limited to information and simple interaction simulations. How come the Volus were the first species given an embassy? In the early years following the formation of the Council, the Volus were, apart from the Asari and Salarians, the most populous and So he's still bitter even though they're the f they were the first space. one accepted they in. established many new colonies and trading outposts and they petitioned the Council for a greater role in determining interstellar policy. In recognition of their work to expand interstellar trade and establish a standardized galactic economy, the Volus were granted an embassy here on the Citadel. Why weren't they made a Council race? The Council this races robot has have some extensive responsibilities. Extensive knowledge. They must provide personnel and ships for the Citadel fleets. They often provide economic aid in times of disaster. It would be unfair to demand such an enormous burden of a species unable to meet these obligations. The embassies allow lesser species to have a voice on the Citadel. Lesser species? That's pretty damn arrogant. I apologize if my personality has offended you. Please submit all I didn't mean to be in writing mean. to the Citadel Tourist and Visitor Board. Just curious about the, the word choice. Do you know anything about specters? 
The term Spectre is derived from the branch of Special Tactics and Reconnaissance. Each Spectre agent is hand-picked by the Council. Their primary role is preserving galactic stability and resolving volatile situations that cannot be handled through normal political channels. In this role, they are granted extraterritorial rights and jurisdictions. Spectres answer to no law or authority except the Council itself. What can you tell me about the Citadel Council? Originally, the We're Council learning, consisted chat. of representatives I, I hope everyone's taking all these Solarians, notes. The two dominant species in Citadel space. Roughly 1,304 galactic standard years ago, Turians were invited to join the Council in recognition of the role they played during the Krogan Rebellion. Krogan? Since then, the three Council races have worked together to ensure the peaceful coexistence of the galactic community, while preserving individual autonomy for each species. It can't be as simple as that. There must be problems somewhere in the system. I am not programmed to make that kind of qualified okay, judgment. Okay, okay. My code is limited to information and simple interaction simulations. Is it gonna be a quiz? Goodbye. Goodbye, and thank Kidding. you for using Avena. Please enjoy your visit to the Citadel. To CSEC Academy, to the tower. We got these little cars that could take you everywhere you want to go. To the financial district, to the tower. We don't want to go straight to the tower. Let's go check out what's down here. Let's see what's going on at the Cop Academy. Aw, oh, boo! The council won't let us visit the Cop Academy. There's a Krogan statue. Yeah, we could just pull our guns out out here. No one seemed any bit panicked that we all... A, 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 a uh, group of soldiers just pull out all their weapons. Okay, let's walk. Let's walk this way. Whee! There was a store. I think I can go to the store, at least. See, though, chat? There's just a lot. It's cool. You see all these species intermingling, hanging out, chatting. There's a lot going on here. Look Yo. at that bug thing over there. What's it doing? Hello, bug. Please do not disturb the keepers. Welcome to Presidium Tourism Terminal 2. Behind me is the spectacular relay monument. A scale model representation of a Prothean mass relay. To your left is one of the keepers, the enigmatic caretakers of the Citadel, working on a control panel. You may see keepers involved in various tasks throughout all levels of the Citadel. We ask that you do not interfere with them in any way. The keepers are essential to the smooth operation of the Citadel. Obstructing their daily work will result in harsh penalties, including incarceration. Oh my god. And rehabilitation. Rehab? I'd like to know more about the Keepers. Little is known about these peaceful servants of the Citadel, though they are essential to the operation and maintenance of the entire station. Citadel regulations protect the Keepers against interference during the performance of their tasks. Failure to comply will result in harsh penalties. So they... <laughs> Keepers can be seen in all sections of the Citadel, but are typically found in and around the tower. Well, they just found they just found this ship or something and, and then they found the bugs and they're like, uh hi. What are you? And then they just were like working. Any particular reason there are so many keepers in this area? The keepers do not communicate with other species. It is assumed, however, that the tower houses the Citadel's primary control systems. Many of the station systems, such as navigation and life support, function automatically. It is believed the Keepers operate those systems from inside the tower's inaccessible core. The Keepers also make frequent appearances in the Council Chamber itself, though they appear to be just passing through on their way to some other destination. Tell me more about the Relay Monument. 
Discovered by the Asari who first arrived at the Citadel, the Relay Monument is one of the station's most interesting and controversial features. What is the meaning behind this striking piece of art? Is it a tribute to Prothean vanity? A reminder of their conquest of the galaxy through mass relay technology? Or perhaps it is a symbol of unity? A Prothean acknowledgement that the relays would eventually lead other species here to the Citadel. No one can say for sure, making the Relay Monument hmm. a favorite topic of discussion among academics and scholars. That's all for now. Thank it's, you. It's it's just so idea. again. Have a pleasant day. So interesting that they that people would just not really recognize or do anything with the fact that people just or that the this ancient race that built this Im incredible building and all the mass relays, they just vanished one day, and no one really had more questions about that, you know? They're just like, okay. We'll just reap the rewards of this amazing hub we've we've discovered. Yo, is this a store? What's this? One of the Earth Clan. Ah, a very famous one, yes? You are the one called Shepard. The tale of how you survived the great tragedy on Akuz is truly remarkable. I am amazed each time I hear it. <laughs> Who are you? You've got me at a disadvantage here. Forgive me, Earth Clan. My name is Barla Vaughn. My job makes it necessary for me to keep informed. I am a financial advisor to many important clients here on the Citadel. When someone as important as yourself <laughs> arrives on the station, I take notice. Well, maybe maybe that's the one thing us humans have that uh, other species do not. It's just the ability to not be so frank in all conversation. Tact. Just... <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, man, it's amazing how you survived when all your friends died and that horrifying thing that happened to you. Anyway, hi, my name's Barla. <laughs> Tell me more about your job. Galactic finance is incredibly complex. A mix of laws and regulations from dozens of interstellar economies. I'm an expert in how all these economies interact. For a fee, I share my expertise. I also offer premium services for those clients who need someone to conduct business without drawing unwanted attention. Discreet and efficient. That's my motto. Sounds pretty shady. Everything I do falls completely within the bounds of interstellar commerce law. Even so, many of my clients would prefer their transactions well, there you to remain go. That's shady now, isn't it? For example, suppose a Hanar ambassador was petitioning the council to reduce tariffs on Hanar goods. How would it look if he had money invested in a Hanar exporting company? Not good. Even if his true motives were to help his people, he would be accused of advancing the petition for his own personal gain. I can keep his personal finances private. Okay, okay. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. No doubt I'll have to come talk to you later to get some info I need. <gasps> the Hanar, 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 Hanar. It's like a museum. <laughs> What's going on? It's just these desks with stuff on them. Yo, it's a shopkeeper. Oh, it's a store. Ah, human. This one is greatly pleased to see you here in my decadent emporium. Who are you? <laughs> what, who? What? This one's face name is Delaninder, though many in this place simply refer to it as Delan. Please take time to examine the fine goods it has for purchase. All Best the alien work. species. What exactly do you sell? Only the finest and most luxurious items that credits can buy. This one is able to procure almost any item the human would desire. For a price, naturally. Why do you refer to yourself as this one and it? For the same reason that humans are so inquisitive, it is part of our culture. Specifically, 
Hanar only refer to themselves in the first person with family or it's intimates. A great. And we rarely do so with other species. It is just our way. Potion, sir. It's just, it's so great. Uh, you know, this is one of the examples in, like, the, the Elcor and even the, the, the Volus, you know. Too many sci-fi series go, oh, aliens? Oh, yeah, they kind of look like humans, but they're, like, a little weirder, you know? And, like, it, it's just so great to see some actual, like, super interesting and varied forms of alien beings, you know? Who are you? Oh, this oops. Oops. Please take time to examine Show Alaska. me your items. Oh, this one is pleased to do so, human. You will not be disappointed. View armor. Krogan, Turian, and Quarian armor. We don't have any of these species in our crew yet, so we don't have to worry so much. Ugh. Oh. Commander. Show me your items. Shop is terrible. Oh, this one is. Shop interface is not good. I do like hammerhead rounds too. It's half of our money, but let's get it. I think I'll be going. Return soon. This one receives new shipments regularly. Commander. Show me your items. <laughs> Welcome EA Gains. Went back to the trilogy on your PS3 and then a week later they announced the remaster. Hey, at least you start, you, you know, it, maybe if you got pretty far into Mass Effect 1, you can just get the uh, get get the, the remaster and get... Uh, oh, wait, no. It was announced a long time ago. It's not like it just released. Yeah, so you probably at least hopefully got through Mass Effect 1 and then you could hop right into Mass Effect 2 if you get the remaster. Don't know what this does, but it's cheap and it's clearly some kind of it unlocks something of some sort so let's buy that I I, I read that as like <laughs> it was released a week later but nothing more here okay time to go meet the council Well, if you didn't get too far, I'd say it's definitely worth it to hop into the Legendary Edition. Like, this looks and runs so well from what I remember. I was gonna... This is the PC version, by the way, if anyone was curious. I was gonna get the... Okay, can't go there. I was gonna get the... Um, get it on console mostly out of nostalgia but I instead decided to go with PC because of the modding community and the potential for mods all right let's go up the tower so this is an, an, a thing that's infamous in this series is the elevators Now you can skip them. They were load screens, pretty much. The elevators existed simply for characters to be able to communicate. Or, or they existed to load in new sections of the game. But what they did with the, the elevators is they made them uh, moments where characters could interact with each other and communicate and, and share, you know, either silly, goofy things. But now you can skip them. But again, like, you, you lose some of those character interactions, so I'm glad they, they didn't just get rid of them. Thank you, EA Games, for the follow. I just realized my notification sound it was off for that. But yeah, I love that they did that. It's, a, it's such a great... Particularly, you know, going into some, like, very intense situations and stuff, like... 
there were some great conversations that were shared between characters. So I'm glad it's not just gone. Oh, Garrus. Saren's hiding something. Garrus. More time. Stall them. Stall the council. Don't be ridiculous. Wait, how did you Your get here? Investigation is over, Garrus. <laughs> Hello, Commander Shepard. Garrus Vakari. I was the officer in charge of the CSEC investigation into Saren. Sounds like you really want to bring him down. I don't trust him. Something about him rubs me the wrong way. But he's a specter. Everything he touches is classified. I can't find any hard evidence. I think the Council's ready for us, Commander. Good luck, Shepard. Maybe they'll listen to you. Garrus is the you best. Keep the council waiting. Uh... Garrus was a, a good friend of mine in the original series. But this time, since we're playing Lady Shep, we're playing Femme Shep. Maybe our friendship will, will increase exponentially if you, if you catch my drift. Yeah, that guy's name was Thane. Yeah, yeah, the, the assassin. So I even heard, I don't know, I can't remember. I even heard that they changed even the geography of some areas and maps where in the original game, they they put up walls and, and things to like cut off certain rooms and stuff. Here, they were, and they did that because of like resources, right? So like when you were going around a corner, they could load that room before you could see it. But now they don't need to do that because all of our PCs and consoles are so much, uh, Stronger that they don't need to add in those little like loop arounds. The bolus won't be joining the council for years. I'm not so sure. The humans are making a strong push, and you can bet the bolus will be right on their coattails if they succeed. And so they they went in and implemented some changes because you didn't need to worry about that stuff anymore. And so instead, oh, this, is this dude just sleeping? I wish I could sleep like that. Um, they, they made it, made rooms look, you know, no, more I'm practical. Speak with one of the counselor's assistants. Commander. Um, and instead of having all these weird tucked away corners and stuff that just looked out of place, they made them look normal again no, because technology's better. And I, I, I love stuff like that. Same as the elevators, you know? Hello, Captain. The hearing's already started. Come on. The Geth attack is a matter of some concern, but there is nothing to indicate Saren was involved in any way. The investigation by Citadel Security turned up no evidence to support your charge of treason. Sparatus. An eyewitness saw him kill Nihilus in cold blood. We've read the Eden Prime reports, Ambassador. The testimony of one traumatized dock worker is hardly compelling proof. I resent these accusations. Nihilus was a fellow Spectre and a friend. That just let you catch him off guard. Captain Anderson, you always seem to be involved when humanity makes false charges against me. And this must be your protection. Has this happened Commander before? Shepard. Should that not be enough? One who let the beacon get destroyed. <laughs> is there not enough? Like, if this has happened before, should that not be a warning sign? The mission to Eden Prime was top secret. The only way you could know about the beacon was if you were there. With Nihilus gone, his files passed on to me. Mm. I read the Eden Prime report. Suspicious, Sarah. I was unimpressed. But what can you expect from a human? Saren despises humanity. That's why he attacked Eden Prime. Your species needs to learn its place, Shepard. You're not ready to join the Council. You're not even ready to join the Spectres. He has no right to say that! That's he not has his no decision! Right. Shepard's admission into the Spectres is not the purpose of this meeting. This meeting has no purpose. The humans are wasting your time, Counselor. And mine. I'll find proof, bro. You can't hide behind the Council forever. There is still one outstanding issue. Commander Shepard's vision. It may have been triggered by the Beacon. Are we allowing dreams into evidence now? How can I defend my innocence against this kind of testimony? I agree. 
Our judgment must be based Ooh. on facts and evidence, not wild imaginings and reckless speculation. Do you have anything else to add, Commander Shepard? You've made your decision. I won't waste my breath. Got him, dude. The Council has found no evidence of any connection between Saren and the Geth. Ambassador, your petition to have him disbarred from the Spectres is denied. I'm glad to see justice was served. Meanwhile, he's currently this on board <laughs> a suspicious ship. Wink, 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 wink. It was a mistake bringing you into that hearing, Captain. You and Saren have too much history. It made the Council question our motives. I know Saren. He's working with the Geth for one reason. To exterminate the entire human race. Every colony we have is at risk. Every world we control is in danger. Even Earth isn't safe. Tell me about this history between you and Sarah. <laughs> Can I get that detail that you didn't give me time. before? Things went bad. Real bad. We shouldn't talk about this here. But I know what he's like. And he has to be stopped. Well then now what? Council's not going to give Spectre, us anything. He's virtually untouchable. We need to find some way to expose him. Let's go find Garrus. What about Garrus, that CSEC investigator? We saw him arguing with the executor. That's right. He was asking for more time to finish his report. Seems like he was close to finding something on Saren. Any idea where we could find him? I have a contact in CSEC who can help us track Garrus down. His name is Harkin. Forget it. They suspended Harkin last month, drinking on the job. I won't waste my time with that loser. You won't have to. I don't want the Council using your past history with Saren as an excuse to ignore anything we turn up. Shepard will handle this. You can't just cut Captain Anderson out of this investigation. He's our the friend. The Ambassador's right. I need to step aside. I need to take care of some business. Captain, meet me in my office later. Who's Udina's voice Harkin's actor? Harkin's probably getting drunk at Cora's Den. It's a dingy little club in the lower section of the wards. Maybe there's another way to find evidence against Saren. You should talk to Barla Vaughn over in the There we go. Place. Rumor has it he's an agent for the Shadow Broker. The Shadow Broker? An information dealer. Buys and sells secrets to the highest bidder. I've heard Barla Vaughn's one of the top representatives. He might know something about Saren, but his information won't come cheap. You don't think much of Harkin. The guy joined CSEC about 20 years ago. He's been an embarrassment to our species ever since. Roughing up suspects in custody, bribery accusations, alcohol and drug use. The embassy used to step in when he got in trouble. But I guess enough was enough. Oh. I should go. Oh, dang Good it. Luck, I didn't mean... Oh, boo. I did not mean to cut out of that conversation. Well, with that out of the way I was going to say hmm. that I think we're about done for today let's talk to Torben what oh no I wasn't never mind what um yes is there something you want why are you so interested in the keepers Keepers? I've got no interest in the keep. Don't get coy. I know what I saw. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm not so sure I should be talking to you about this. It's fine, dude. Just tell chill. me what you're doing. I'm not here to get you into trouble. I'm not a narc. All right. I guess it wouldn't hurt to tell you. I'm using a small scanner to gather readings on the keepers. So far, I've had mixed results. I find it difficult to get near the creatures. Why were you being so secretive about it, though? Well, technically, welcome we're not back. To disturb the keepers. I don't really. I miss legit carnage out of fries, but we do have a place to get them disagree. here. I'd like to do it more openly, but it's not really worth getting arrested over. I'm, I'm I on help it. You out. I'm not worried about the authorities. I don't even know who you are. I'm Commander Shepard with the Alliance Military. Hmm. Well, I, I suppose I could use the help. You'll need this. It's the scanning device I developed. Activated. Potion sellers time back, back at All his shop. data will automatically upload to my database. I'll even send a few credits your way for each unique scan. What are you doing with the data once you've scanned it? 
trying to learn whatever I can about the Keepers. We see them working everywhere, yet we know so little about them. I'm a scientist. I want to know what makes them tick. So, literally, how has no one done this before him? I should get going then. Yes, I have much work myself. So long, and good luck with the scanning. So now we have a bunch of these little buddies that we can scan. No, I haven't spoken to him before. Can I talk to you now? This is the first time I've requested an audience. Commander? No. We'll head towards where we're going, but but we're coming towards the end of the stream here yeah, today, chat. Wait. Doesn't seem like I have much choice. There's a lot of downtime in this, which is is so uh, the opposite of what a Returnal playthrough has been like. Um, so it's it's kind of fun in that way to have that contrast now. So from now on, uh, Tuesdays will be Returnal. Fridays will be Mass Effect. Until we beat Returnal, then then Mass Effect will bleed into the Tuesdays for a little while until we find another game to be our Tuesday game. Um, I li I'd like to thank everybody who came out and watched today. It was uh, it's a big nostalgia blast to come back to this game. The first game is a lot slower than uh, than the f the other two, so I, I it's 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 so far you know a, a much quieter experience compared to the second and third games, but it's still super good. It's super fun. It, it establishes everything. You know, it's important. I can't believe the council ignored all the evidence against Saren. Saren's one of their best operatives. It's only natural they take his word. So now we just chase leads while this smug Turian runs around with his geth troopers. That's politics, Chief. I hate politics. See, what I appreciate now is that before, after the conversation was done, there would still be so much elevator ride, right? Like, because it's still loading the next map. But now it's like the conversation finishes and you're you're straight back into the action. And so that I appreciate... The keepers. Uh, them keeping that in rather than deleting those conversations because they're so important. I've told you before, you're not allowed in here. This one believes Yo. the right to move freely through this area. What's going on here? You're creating a public disturbance. It's against Citadel regulations. That Hanar refuses to listen to reason. Why can't it act in an orderly and lawful manner? Be open minded, brother. It should be more tolerant. It's just trying to express its beliefs. I am not unreasonable. The Hanar is free to spew its nonsense once it purchases an evangelical permit. So if the Hanar gets a permit, it's allowed to preach? No. Registered evangelicals must follow regulations. There are specific areas where preaching is Gotta legal. learn everything I can to, to help this Hanar. Regulations results in the forfeiture of the license. Here's one of those potion sellers, Blaxel. What's the purpose behind the evangelical permits? Forcing religious evangelicals to register for a permit weeds out undesirables. It keeps the area safe. The Citadel is too important to become a battleground for a religious war. If you'd like, I could talk to the Hanar for you. I have argued with the stubborn jelly all afternoon. You are certainly welcome to try. Hello, Hanar. Do you desire to learn of the Enkindlers? Or has the Honorable CSEC officer enlisted assistance? Why is the CSEC officer harassing you? The CSEC officer requests that this one purchase an evangelical permit to spread the truth of the Enkindlers. <laughs> if that's all the CSEC Thank you officer for the wants, why not just buy the permit? The truth of the Enkindlers love, is universal. We love this the, one humbly believes Hainar. that the truth should not be suppressed. Exacting payment as a means of imposing limits upon the truth is an abrogation of this one's religious freedom. Very true. So you're breaking the law by preaching without a permit right now? The CSEC officer states that preaching in this place is forbidden, and preaching anywhere on the Citadel requires a permit. 
This one humbly submits that it is not preaching to state the truth of the enkindlers, and thus no permit should be necessary. How do they define? It is such a nebulous thing to define. Let me talk to the CSEC officer. Perhaps I can explain the situation. This one would be most grateful for Back and forth. Please let this one know if success is achieved. Any progress with that Hanar? I think you should let the Hanar preach in the Presidium. The Presidium is a place of culture and respect. It should not be filled with zealots shouting their idiocy. You think this dude's shouting? Why should the jellies get special treatment? Every other species understands and obeys the laws. It's not causing trouble. Fine, I'll buy the permit. If I purchase the evangelical permit myself, would that take care of things? As long as it stays in approved areas once it has the permit, yes. That would solve the issue for me. I'll be back. I don't care what you have to do. Just get rid of that Hanar. Has the CSEC officer been assuaged? I'll keep working on it. This one will continue to spread its message. So it's not over. You gotta buy the permit. So with that in mind, that'll be our cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> As we head over to Garrus 2 in the next section, there's a lot of establishing that this uh, uh, session of the game was going to need to do. Um, and so it was always going to be a little a little quieter. And again, it's a quieter game compared to uh, further sessions and, and, and uh, sections of the game. But I'd like to uh, uh, say thank you to everyone who stopped by today. I think our, our longer creator uh, character creation, you know, kind of quieted the crowd down a little bit towards the beginning. And and I get it. Here, what we'll do to, to finish up is uh, we'll show you where the source of my uh, my image here is from a video that has a lot of nostalgia for me. But um, yeah, thanks to everybody who stopped by. Um, it was a fun stream. I I really love Mass Effect, so I'm excited to start that adventure now. Um. A little quieter again, like I said, slower game, quieter game. Uh... <laughs> Playing Phas and Phasmophobia, and that's the face you got. Hey, I'm glad to add to the fear. You know, I'm I'm enhancing the atmosphere. Um, thanks to everyone who stopped by today. Here is the source of that. Oops, wrong one. There you go. Here, here's what the, the, the that image is. Okay, Black Soul, here you go. Your contact lens has just arrived. 1-800-CONTACTS. They can't have my brand. I have special eyes. Look. Look with your special eyes. My brand! That's it. That's the whole thing. I love, I love that commercial, by the way. That commercial is iconic to me. <laughs> my brand um and i i remember that that just hit that just hit so good as when i was younger and it's the first thing i thought of when i when i needed an image for mass effect today um <laughs> have you seen that commercial that's a good commercial just like i i have special eyes they couldn't have my prescription my brand it's good it's good it's good stuff um yeah We'll be back tomorrow, I believe. Um, if not, you know, we'll we'll let you know. But I believe we'll be back tomorrow with Fern. Fern will be back on the stream tomorrow. It's been more than a week since Fern's last appearance because of uh, our COVID vaccinations last week. Uh, took us out of the stream since Tuesday. Uh, and we'll be playing po new Pokemon Snap. So come on and hang out with us then. That'll be tomorrow at, at 5 p.m. PST. I, we did go a little earlier than we usually do today. So that's why a lot of y'all are coming in and, and we're ending 
a lot sooner than you probably expect, but come on back tomorrow to see Fern, to see Pokemon Snap, and to see uh, what secrets await. We, we, we unlocked two new areas, so it's going to be an exciting one tomorrow. But yeah, thanks for stopping by. Uh, thanks for following all the new people. Uh, we got a, a few new followers today. And uh, yeah, we're happy to we're happy to have you. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you again tomorrow, five p.m. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye, bye.